Hi, brothers and sisters. Today I want to share with you a uh, prophetic dream that I received this morning, the 18th of March, 2018. It was 5 a.m. when I woke up. And it's a uh, prophetic dream about hell. And so all day long I've been pretty disturbed about it. Um, been pretty consumed by what, what I saw and what the Lord showed me. And so I need to share it with you. I need to share it with um, everyone. So thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord. I ask you that you help me through this, Lord. That you help me to, to preach this. That it be your Holy Spirit that speaks through me. Lord, I ask that you touch and bless those that are listening, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Father God. And that you will touch their hearts, Father God. That you will... Um, Open their eyes so those that are blind and open the ears of those that are not hearing for a message like this is not preached very much these days, Father God. I thank you for all you do, Lord, and the glory is completely yours in Jesus' name. So I'm going to read a lot from my notes because I wrote things down. Um, but it was... Um, Essentially, I, uh, I could hear, I could hear, I could see the lake of fire, and I could hear the people screaming, the loudness of the people screaming. And it was so uh, overwhelming, the, um, how loud millions and millions and millions of voices men and women screaming and screaming non-stop non-stop the whole dream i'm hearing them and i'm seeing the lake of fire i'm seeing uh uh, uh the bodies their 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 skin melting i'm seeing everything being taken away from them i'm seeing the skeletons i'm seeing them just be melted and, and pieces falling off and i'm hearing this horrific horrific the most horrific screams you could ever even imagine you can't even imagine them you cannot even imagine the horrific screams And so, um, I wrote down, I could hear people screaming in the pit of hell, the most horrifying screams, so loud, full of agony and torment. There's so many, many millions, all the people that denied him, all the people that denied the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's just, it just shook me. It shook me. And uh, there was so much sorrow. There was so much sorrow in there. And the screams that never ending. And, 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 and knowing that that lake of fire never ever ends. They never stop burning. They never stop suffering. They never stop hungering and thirsting. And screaming. And in pain and fear. Uh, the amount again. The amount of voices was horrifying. It was so impressive to me. Um to, to see this and to hear it. And uh, in the dream itself, I knew that God had been warning and warning people and warning them. And people kept denying him. People kept putting him off. People kept uh, waiting for later to repent. Pray you hear this. That they, were, they kept waiting for a later day to repent. They wanted to live their lives in sin first and later, waiting for later to repent. But later never came. Later never came for them. What came for them was death and hell. The devil lied to them and they ran out of time. They ran out of time, folks. It was too late. 
Now they can't get out in this place where there's no hope, where there's only torment, where there's only terror. And I wrote down in my notes, but today, if you are listening to this, there is hope in the cross of Jesus Christ. If you are listening to this to this video, there is hope in the cross of Jesus Christ. He went to the cross to save us. He went to the cross to die for us and gave his blood to save us, folks. Again, the, the, there were so many things happening all at once. And I knew in the dream things that were written, things that have been written in scriptures who are being fulfilled. I knew that things that were written for people's lives were being fulfilled. I knew that 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 uh, people had been that had had a chance to repent in the dream itself. And they ended up in hell because they kept denying the Lord. And um, I also saw. Um, many like writings that kept saying like in the headlines said meet Jesus meet Jesus and underneath there was a lot of lot of writing writings um, again I, I wrote down those in hell were warned people were sent to them to get them to return to the Lord but they kept refusing the Lord and the day and the day came for them when it was too late the final call came to them where it was too late folks and this may be a final call for you if you're listening in and you're living in sin may the Lord touch your heart and bring you back for those of you that have family members and people that you know that their lives that they're living are in full of sin and they're they're heading straight to the pit of hell. And I, I pray you share this with them. Um, the other thing that was so, oh God Almighty, this thing grabbed me so much is is just just knowing that that the the punishments were so severe, folks. I don't know how else to explain it. They were so severe. I, I, I got no words to explain that the punishments that each one were allotted was were so severe that, that we couldn't even endure it here on earth. And, and they had to endure it and it never ever ends. Billions of years will go by and they're still going to be suffering the, the things that have been, they have been sentenced to suffer. And it was so severe, folks. I was so filled with the fear of the Lord. Even when I woke up, I was so filled with the fear of the Lord, folks. It was so severe. As I don't know. Again, I don't know how else to explain it. The Lord showed me a vision um, a while back of a man. This man is in hell. I do not know who he is. But he sits in a box. And he cannot get out of this box. And he sits there waiting horrified knowing what awaits for him every single time and and rats and animals come in and into his body and eat through his flesh eat him alive eat through his eyes eat through his skin and while he's sitting there horrified just horrified screaming trembling screaming he can't move he can't get out of there and this happens over and over and over again I do not know what this man did. I don't know who he is. But the Lord showed me this several, several times. So I wanted to share it with you. Because after seeing this dream last night, it all comes together. It's just the the torments and the punishments for, for people are, are horrifying. And um, so I wrote down... Millions were in hell for several, several reasons. There were so many cries of regret, regret, so much sorrow and so much regret. Why didn't I? Why didn't I do this? Why didn't I change? Why didn't I repent? Why didn't I listen while they were warning me on earth? Why didn't I listen to my family? Why didn't I listen to, to, to my friends or to whoever had went to them and warned them that the Lord sent to them? And... uh 
they were just burning and burning in, in, in extreme heat. As so I wrote down, let me make sure I'm not, thank you Heavenly Father, thank you Lord. I wrote down uh, notes when I woke up because I, I woke up, I jolted out of bed just, just from seeing this stuff. And um, I wrote down, hell is so real, hot fire burning sulfur. While we sit on earth, living our lives, ignoring God's merciful calls to get us to repent. You know, it, it was like I woke up and I reached for, for a, a glass of water. And it was just that realization that I could reach for a little glass of water. And the other reality that is right underneath our feet is hell. Hell is real, folks, and, and it's right underneath our feet. It is people are burning and screaming and going through torments that we cannot even begin to imagine. And all this is taking place while we are up here on earth and we keep rejecting the Lord and we keep living our lives and we keep never having time for him and we keep ignoring his calls and we keep in sin. And he keeps trying to call. He keeps calling and trying to reach us. All this has happened parallel up here. While well, all this reality underneath us has taken place, folks. It, it just became so apparent to me. So I wrote, while we sit on earth living our lives, ignoring God's merciful calls to get us to repent. And this is a merciful call. This is a mercy, for, the mercy of God to give us dreams like this like he's given to so many people of dreams of hell to get people to return back to him to get people to not end up there it's not his will that anyone should perish he, he purchased us with his blood souls are burning and splitting hell wide open right now even right now as i'm doing this video even right now thousands are falling into hell while we can go and get a drink of, uh, of food or of, uh, water or food as we desire, as I, I was mentioning, there's not a drop of water in hell for all eternity. And I will uh, make reference to Luke 16. said, there was a certain man, a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed in purple and fine linen and who lived each day in luxury. At his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus who was covered with sores. As Lazarus lay there longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and his soul went to the place of the dead. There in torment, he saw Abraham in the far distance with Lazarus at his side. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I am in anguish in these flames. <coughs> but Abraham said to, to him, Son, remember that during your lifetime you had everything you wanted and Lazarus had nothing. So now he is being... He is here being comforted, and you are in anguish. Some separating us, meaning a great gulf. Not one can cross over to you from here, and no one can cross over to us from there. Then the rich man said, Please, Father Abraham, at least send him to my father's home, for I have five brothers, and I want, them, I want him to warn them so they won't end up in this place of torment. But Abraham said, Moses and the prophets have warned them, your brothers can read what they wrote. The rich man replied, No, Father Abraham, but if someone is sent to them from the dead, then they will repent to, <clears throat> of their sins and turn to God. But Abraham said, If they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't listen even if someone rises from the dead. So the Lord is really uh, warning us. I wanted to share that with you because the Lord is warning us through this vision and all the many other um, dreams and visions that people have had and shared. 
of the, the reality of hell and how serious this is and how serious it is for us to get right with God. We got to get this folks. Um, the word tells us in John twelve forty eight, he that rejects me and receives not my words has one that judges him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that his commandment is the everlasting, is life everlasting. Whatsoever I speak, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. So we see that the very word that, that, that people reject and the people uh, get offended by and that people push aside is the very word that we are judged by in the last day, in the day of judgment where we're seated before him. It's that very word that even though people reject and turn, uh, turn down and put aside, that very word shall never pass away. It tells us in the three Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. In Matthew 5.18 it tells us, For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be, be fulfilled. So the word of the Lord stands. And we got to get how serious his word is and how serious his warnings are and how serious we need to take the word of God. Thank you, wonderful Jesus. So while we sit up here with our proud attitude and selfishness, people in hell have no hope. They have no hope. They will never, ever get out. The torments are so severe that our minds cannot grasp the severity. And the Lord said to me, Daughter, tell them to repent. Tell them to repent and to sin no more. He said, Daughter, you tell them, tell my people to repent, to live a repentant life, to live a life that's, that's holy and surrendered to me and to, to constantly live a consecrated life. And holy unto him and repenting for we make mistakes folks we all do this is a warning call for all of us no matter what type of walk you have with the Lord to constantly be surrendered to him and holy while we try to witness to people and there's they so callously reject the Lord because it's not us they're rejecting. It's the Lord they're rejecting. It's the Lord they're denying when they don't want you to witness. When they don't want you to pray. When they don't want you to, to, to preach to them. And again, if these people don't repent, the day of great slaughter will come for them too. The eternal place of suffering beyond our understanding. A place of punishment so intense and so severe. I wrote down while right now while I tell you this. And the Holy Spirit tugs at your heart. And I know the Holy Spirit is tugging at many of you. And you vacillate. Whether you should put away those sins that you're into. Those sins that keep you bound. Those sins that got you got a hold of you those things in the world that are pulling you down and 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 and, and, and more into lovers of pleasure than more than lovers of God the Lord is tugging at your how at your heart whether you should and you are thinking well should I put away these sins but I enjoy him too much I like him too much or so and so has me into this or whatever reasoning Whatever excuses that we're making. Folks, this is so real. If We, we just got to get this. This is so real. And nobody knows the day or the hour that, 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 that our life ends. And it's sudden. It's very sudden. There's no time to repent when that time comes. Unless we have our hearts straight 
we, unless we have our, our, our hearts, we've given our lives to the Lord and we keep living a life that's, that's uh, uh, abiding in the love of God, abiding in His Word. Uh, thank you, Heavenly Father. The Lord prompts me to... Um, thank you, wonderful Jesus. First John, the book of First John. Oh, wow. Oh, the Lord tells us, do not love the world. First John 2.15, love not, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that does the will of God abides forever. Thank you, Lord. So I wrote down. Thank you, Lord. Help me, please. Help your people to hear this message. Help your people to turn around back to you. Help your people, Lord. Help your people. Help your people touch their hearts, Father God. Touch them to those that don't hear. Touch them, Father. Bring them back. Bring them back, Lord. So I wrote down even in my notes... Um, to hear me, hear me. God, out of his mercy, is pleading with you to repent and return to Jesus, to give your life to him. There were millions of people that were screaming, Why did nobody tell me? Why did nobody tell me? Why did nobody tell me hell was real? Why did nobody tell me this was going to happen? Why did nobody tell me I was living in sin? Why did nobody tell me that if I continued the way that I did, I would end up here. Why did nobody tell me? Where are you, God? Where are you? So today, folks, today you are being told. Today you are hearing it. Today you are hearing hell is real. You don't have to take my word for it. Just go to the Bible and you can see. Today you are told, folks. And you have a choice today. You have a choice today to repent this very day. Today's the day of salvation. This very day. Thank you, Lord. There were so many severe sentences that were passed. <clears throat> because they wanted nothing to do with Jesus. So they ended up in a place that had nothing to do with Jesus. And that place is hell. Um, I'm going to read to you a, um, a couple of things I want to share. One is from the book of Enoch. And another thing I'm going to share with you is, um, many of you probably have heard of him, Bill Weiss. He uh, shared his testimony and it's on YouTube. You can search for it. Uh, 23 Minutes in Hell. Very, very powerful testimony. Uh, if you've never heard it, I recommend that you look it up and, and hear it because he does an excellent job explaining it. And, of course, he's the one that went through it. So um, he will do a better job. But I want to share with you some things that he um, talked about because it just it just hit me. Um, the loudness of the screams was one of them the darkness and the heat okay so i'm going to share this part with you so this this is um i'm not starting from the beginning i'm just picking up from this part where he talks about the screaming in hell so he see he said i was lying in the cell and it went dark pitch pitch black i mean a darkness i have never ever felt before and I have been down in caves, way down in iron mines in Arizona. 
there are there was a blackness that you couldn't couldn't even imagine i managed to crawl out somehow and i was able to crawl and they let me apparently i remembered this this is in hell when the where the door was so i crawled towards it and i felt my way so he felt his way through and i got outside of the cell i looked one direction all black and all i heard was screams billions of people screaming in this place i knew there were billions and it was so loud this is what i heard they were so loud if you have ever heard someone scream before it is so annoying well if you hear billions of people screaming you can't imagine how it affects your mind you just can't stand it you hold your ears because it is so loud and penetrating you you can't get away from the screams and the fear that overcomes you is unbelievable everything is dominated by fear there is no presence of god in this place so you have to endure the fear and the torment and the and the blackness you can't see anything you can't even see what is coming up against you scripture talks about the darkness psalms 88 6 it says you have laid me in the lowest pit in darkness in the depths revelation 16 10 then the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast and his kingdom became full of darkness and they gnawed their tongues because of the pain jude 1 13 raging waves of the sea foaming up their own shame wandering stars for whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever and there is a darkness which may be felt as shown in exodus 10:21. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward the sky, so that darkness will spread over Egypt. Darkness that can be felt. A darkness that can be felt, folks. You can feel this darkness. The fear, I got to tell you, was so powerful. It grips you. If you have ever seen some scary movie, where the fear jumps up your throat, if you can take that and multiply it at least a thousand, a thousand times and hold it there, that is how you stay all the time at that peak level of fear for eternity. And I know something about fear. So he t tells his story about a, uh, a shark that attacked his leg and, and by the mercy of God, he was let go. He was not saved then, but he got saved after that event. And, uh, but he talks about if no, if nobody ever saw Jaws, if anybody saw Jaws, the movie Jaws, that fear was nothing compared to actually going through it. The fear was terrifying. The guy next to me was just a couple of feet away and a shark ripped his leg right off and they dragged him up on the beach with blood everywhere. He was screaming and had no leg. So I understand fear. This is Bill Weiss talking this. But the, that fear was nothing. Absolute nothing com compared to the fear I felt in hell. No comparison at all. I think the fear I felt from the shark attack was one of the greatest fears we could ever experience on earth. So these are some of the things we have to endure in hell. In Isaiah 24, 17, it says, Fear and the pit and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall be that he who flees from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he who comes up from the midst of the pit shall be caught up in, caught in, in the snare. For the windows from on high are open. And the foundations of the earth are shaken. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And Job, um, uh, well, he makes reference to a guy, Ted Cope, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right. During a presentation he did on Nightline, 
a year and a half ago when he wrote this, so it's probably been longer, visited some of the prisons in our country and spent the night there. He couldn't believe how loud it was, that he couldn't sleep, everybody screaming at the top of their lungs. He said on TV that he had he was shocked by how people just scream and whining all night long. So even in our earthly prisons, people are screaming how much more in hell. In Job 18.14, it says that the wicked ways of man, a person who, who reject the Lord, who rejects the Lord, he is torn from the security of his tent and marched off to the kings of terrors. To the king of terrors. The devil is certainly the king of terrors. Desolation in hell. I was outside of the cell and I looked this direction and as I looked this way, I could see there was flames of fire about 10 miles away from me. I knew it was 10 miles. You, uh, he he makes a comment that, that you have knowledge of how the depthness and how the time, uh, all these things that you know, these things in hell. And a pit of fire about three miles across had flames that lifted lit up the skyline enough to see the landscape of hell just a little bit. The darkness was so heavy, it just eats up any light. But there was enough to just see some of the skyline. It was all brown and desolate. I mean absolutely not one green leaf, not anything of life, of any kind. Just stone, dirt, and black sky, and smoke in the skylight. The flames were really high, so I could see it. That was the scripture in Deuteron Deuteronomy 29, 23. The whole land is brimstone, salt, and burning. It is not sown, nor does it bear, nor does any grass grow there, like the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah, Adam and Sebelim, which the Lord overthrew in his anger and in his wrath. There is no life whatsoever in hell. It is so strange to be in a world where there is no life. Here the, we enjoy trees and fresh air, fresh air, but there is absolutely all dead. The heat was so intense you, can ev you can't even describe it. It tells us in Deuteronomy 32, 24, They shall be burnt with hunger and devoured with burning heat and bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. People were burning in the, in the, in the flames. People were burning and everything was being melted off of them. Jude 1 7 as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them in a similar manner to these having given themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. The book of Jude makes reference to the book, the book of Enoch as well. Psalm eleven six: Upon the wicked he will rain coals, fire and brimstone, and a burning wind shall be the portion of their cup. That's what's going on in hell. It is so hot. All these things should kill you, but you don't die. You don't die. You keep living through this. You had to keep enduring all these things. I wanted peace of mind to get away from the screams and to get out of there, but you can't get out of there. Isaiah 57, 21, it says, there's no peace, says my God, for the, we for the wicked. Thank you, Father. You're also naked in hell. It's just another thing you have to endure. Shame. In Ezekiel 32, 24, it talks about shame in the pit. There is Elam and all her multitude all around her grave, all of them slain, fallen by the sword, who have gone down uncircumcised to the lower parts of the earth, who caused their terror in the land of the living. Now they bear their shame with those who go down to the pit. Job 26, 6, it says, Sheol is naked before him, and destruction has no covering. That means God can see into hell, so it is observable to him. But also, you are naked in hell. Just another thing you have to go through. <clears throat> it's dry in hell. 
<clears throat> there is no water in hell at all. No water. There is no humidity in the air and no water of any kind. It is so dry. You are de desperate for a drop of water. Just one drop of water. Just like the scripture tells us. Luke 16, 23, 24. And being in torments and Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Abraham said, Son, remember? And then he went, went on to talk about his brothers. He wanted him to just dip the tip of his finger in the water to cool his tongue, just to get one drop. That's how desperate, how desperate they are. They're hungry and they can never eat. They're thirsty, they can never drink. That would have been precious, one drop, but you never, ever get a drop. It's hard to imagine how dry your mouth is. If you can imagine doing a marathon, run through Death Valley and having cotton in your mouth and staying there for days, and it just continues like that. Just dry, absolute, desperate for a drop of water. Another thing the scripture revealed to me was we knew that there was a great gulf fixed between them in hell, <clears throat> between paradise and Hades, meaning hell. And the rich man saw Ab Abraham far off. In the natural, how could he recognize Lazarus and Abraham? First of all, he never met Abraham, and then to see someone that far away, you wouldn't really know who they were. But there are just certain things you know in hell. You understand. Like I was saying, the depths, how far and so forth. How far away and, and so forth. Then one of the demons grabbed me and drug me back into the cell and began all these torments. Again, which I really hate to talk about because I don't like to, to have to relive the torment. They began to crush my skull. And there were demons crushing people's skull in the, in the lake of fire. Every time they came back up to, 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 to come out of that torment, they were crushing them. Like, yeah, my God, help us. One demon grabbed me and tried to crush my head. I was screaming and begging for mercy, but no mercy. About this time, they each grabbed an arm and a leg, and they were about to tear off my legs and my arms. I thought, I cannot endure this. I can't endure this. And just when that was about to happen, the Lord took him out of that situation. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'll let you look it up for yourself. I just wanted to share that with you because um, there's a lot of parts that what I saw. Um, thank you, Heavenly Father. For those of you that are still watching and are still around, um, I'm going to share a few pieces of the book of, of Enoch. We got to fear the Lord. We can't fear man, but we got to fear the Lord, folks. There are many things that are coming upon the earth, but we are to fear the living God, not man. And we are to trust him, to give our lives to him. He died for us. He went to the cross. He did it all at the cross for us. This stuff is so real, folks. There's so many things I want to share with you. Um, but I don't want to make it too extra long. Um, thank you, Heavenly Father. So one portion in Enoch chapter 62... Again, I'm just reading pieces, okay? So, um, and the exalted and those who hold the earth, and they shall see the, and recognize how he sits on the throne of his glory, and righteousness is judged before him. And no lying word is spoken before him. No lying word. Not one lying word is spoken before the Lord. There's another reference to that in, in later on. Then shall pain come upon them as a woman in travail. And she... And she has pain in bringing forth when her child enters the mouth of the womb. And she has pain in bringing, 
and bring it forth, bring in the child forth. And one portion of them shall look on the other, and they shall be terrified. And they shall be downcast of countenance, and pain shall seize them, when they see the Son of Man sitting on the throne of his glory. And the kings and the mighty of all who possess the earth shall bless and glorify and exalt him who rules over all, the Lord Jesus Christ, who was hidden. For from the beginning of the from the beginning the Son of Man was hidden, and the Most High preserved him in the presence of his might, and revealed him to the elect, and the congregation of the elect and the holy shall be sown, and all the elect shall stand before him on that day. And all the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who rule the earth shall fall down before him on their faces. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord of lords and the King of kings. It is written. And petition um, was made, petition him and supplicate for mercy at his hands. Nevertheless, that Lord of spirits will so press them that they shall hastily go forth from his presence. They'll, they're going to depart from his presence. And their faces shall be filled with shame. Just like Bill Weiss was explaining. And the darkness grow deeper on their faces. And he will deliver them to the angels of punishment. The angels of destruction down in hell. To execute vengeance on them. Because they have oppressed his children and his elect. And they shall be a spectacle for the righteous and for his elect. They shall rejoice over them because the wrath of the Lord of spirits rests upon them. The wrath of the Lord rests upon people in hell. And his sword is drunk with their blood. The sword of the Lord and the righteous and the elect shall be saved on that day. And they shall never thenceforward see the face of the sinners and unrighteous. And the Lord of Spirits will abide over them. Forgive me, I never gave you the... I, I was saying chapter 62. I started reading from verse um, 3. So if you wanted to, to follow along or if you want to look it up. Going back to verse 13. And the righteous and the elect shall be saved on that day. And they shall never thenceforward see the face of the sinners and unrighteous. And the Lord of Spirits will abide over them. And with that Son of Man shall they eat and lie down and rise up forever and ever. That's hope for us, folks. And the righteous and elect shall have risen from the earth and cease to be of downcast countenance. And they shall have, they shall have been clothed with garments of glory. And these shall be the garments of life from the Lord of Spirits. And your garments shall not grow old, nor your glory pass away from before the Lord of Spirits. All the glory of not rejecting the Lord, receiving the Lord, and, and obeying His word. Chapter 63. In those days shall the mighty and the king who possess the earth implore Him to grant them a little respite from His angels of punishment, to whom they were delivered, that they might fall down and worship before the Lord of Spirits and confess their sins before Him. And they shall bless and glorify the Lord of Spirits and say, Blessed is the Lord of Spirits and the Lord of Kings and the Lord of the Mighty and the Lord of the Rich and the Lord of Glory and the Lord of Wisdom. And as splendid in every secret thing is thy power from generation to generation and thy glory forever and ever. Deeper all your secrets, all thy secrets are innumerable and thy righteousness is beyond reckoning. We have now learnt what we should that that we should glorify and bless the Lord of kings and him who is king over all kings. And they shall say, Who would that would that we had rest to glorify and give thanks? They're wishing they could have rest to be able to give him thanks and confess our faith before his glory. And now we long for a little rest, but find it not. We follow hard upon and obtain it not. And light has vanished from before us. And darkness is our dwelling place forever and ever. For we have not believed before him. 
nor glorified the name of the Lord of spirits, nor glorified our Lord. But our hope was in the scepter of our kingdom and in our glory. And in the day of our suffering and tribulation, he saves us not. And we find no respite for compassion. They cannot repent anymore. That our Lord is true in all his works and his judgments and in his, just, in his justice. And his judgments have no respect of persons. The Lord is no respecter of persons. There's no favorites. There's, there's no one that's better than the other, folks. And we pass away from before his face on account of our works. And all our sins are reckoned up in righteousness. In his righteousness, for he is just and righteous. Now they shall say unto themselves, Our souls are full of unrighteous gain. But it does not prevent us from descending from the mist thereof into the burden of Sheol, hell. And after that their faces shall be filled with darkness and shame before that Son of Man. And they shall be driven from his presence. And the sword shall abide before his face in their midst. Thus spake the Lord of spirits. This is the ordinance and judgment with respect to the mighty and the kings and the exalted. And those who possess the, the, the earth before the Lord of spirits. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to skip another portion. Chapter 67. And in those days, the word of the Lord. Thank you, Father. The word of the Lord came to me, and, and he said to me, Noah, thy lot has come up before me, a lot without blame, a lot of love and uprightness. And now the angels are making a wooden building. And when they have completed that task, I will place my hand upon it and preserve it. He was talking about the, the ark, Noah's ark. Okay. And he will imprison those angels. I'm, I'm skipping over to verse 4. And he will imprison those angels who have shown unrighteousness in that burning valley, which my grandfather Enoch had formerly shown to me in the west among the mountains of gold and silver and iron and soft metal and tin. And I saw that valley in which there was a great convulsion and a convulsion of the waters. And when all this took place from that fiery molten metal and from the convulsion thereof in that place, there was produced a smell of sulfur. We have heard countless people that have, have actually uh, been taken to hell and they speak of the stench and the smell of sulfur. And how disgusting it is, the smell. It's unbearable. Excuse me. And it was connected with those waters. And that valley of the angels who had led astray mankind burned beneath that land. Speaking of hell. And through its valleys proceed streams of fire. Where these angels are punished who had led astray those who dwell upon the earth. Listen to this part. Verse 8. But those waters shall in those days serve for the kings and the mighty and the exalted, and those who dwell on the earth for the healing of the body, but, the pu but for the punishment of the spirit. Now their spirit is full of lust, that they may be punished in their body, for they have denied the Lord of spirits, and see their punishment daily, and, they, and yet believe not in his name. And in proportion, as the burning of their bodies becomes severe, a corresponding change shall take place in their spirit forever and ever. For before the Lord of spirits, none shall utter an idle word. Remember I said that there was another account. This is the second account in just this, these, these scriptures. That none shall utter an idle word, meaning a lying word, deceit, uh, deception, uh, uh, worthlessness um, for the judgment shall come upon them because they believed because they believe in the lust of their body and deny the spirit of the Lord and those waters 
and though and those same waters will undergo a change in those days for when those angels are punished in these waters these water springs shall change their temperature and when the angels ascend this water of the spring shall change and become cold and i heard michael Ma michael the archangel answering and saying this judgment wherewith the angels are judged is a testimony for the kings and the mighty who possess the earth because hell was made for for uh, the devil and his angels it was not made for man because these waters of judgment minister to the healing of the body of the kings and the lust of their body therefore they will not see and will not believe that those waters will change and become a fire which burns forever. Chapter 68. And this is how we are to tremble before the Lord. And after that, my grandfather Enoch gave me the teaching of all the secrets in the book and parables which had been given to him. And he put them together for me in the words of the book of the parables. And on that day... Michael, the archangel, answered Raphael, another uh, holy angel, and said, The power of the Spirit transports and makes me to tremble. Folks, Michael, the archangel, is, is a, a, one of the most powerful uh, uh, holy angels in heaven. And he trembles before the Lord Jesus Christ. He trembles before the throne of God. The holy angels tremble before the Lord. Who are we to not tremble before his name? To not tremble and obey him? So it makes me to tremble because of the severity of the judgment of the secrets. Because of the severity. And this was then the dream. Then knowing that I had of the severity of the punishments that each person in there. I didn't know who they were. I didn't know exactly what they were. Uh, 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 the punishment was. I just knew that it was so severe. I, I couldn't endure it. And so the judgment of the angels. Who, who can endure the severe judgment which has been executed. And before which they melt away. And Michael again answered again and said to Raphael, Who is he whose heart is not softened concerning it? Whose heart doesn't melt before such a judgment? Whose heart doesn't tremble before such judgments of the Lord Jesus Christ? And whose reins, whose mind are not troubled by this word of judgment? That has gone forth upon them because of those who have thus led them out. And it came to pass when he stood before the Lord of Spirits. Michael said thus to Raphael. I will not take their part under the eye of the Lord. I will have no part to do with it. For the Lord of Spirit has been angry with them. Because they do as if they were the Lord. They act as if they were God. They pretend to be gods. Therefore, all that is hidden shall come upon them forever and ever. For neither angel nor man shall have his portion in it, but alone they have received their judgment forever and ever. Thank you, Heavenly Father. It's very... Um, very, very um, troubling to see what I saw. And again, I just saw a little portion. But it's very troubling to me. Um, and I pray it is to you too. I pray that this touches you and I pray that the Lord is the one that's touching your heart and 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 those that you know are are heading straight to this place. Hell is no party. A lot of people um out of ignorance say that hell is is a big party place. Hell is a place of torment. Hell is a place of of never-ending destruction of torment. Of terror. Thank you, Heavenly Father.
There's so many scriptures that I would love to share with you. There's so much in the book of Enoch. Oh, my Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I just skipped to chapter 97. It says, Believe you righteous that the sinners will become ashamed and perish in the day of unrighteousness. Be it known unto you, ye sinners, that the Most High is mindful of your destruction and the angels of heaven rejoice over your destruction. What will you do, you sinners? And whither will ye flee on that day of judgment? The day of judgment is coming, folks. The day of judgment is coming. That great, terrible day. Ye shall uh, fear like uh, ye shall fear like unto them against whom this word shall be a testimony. His word. Ye have been companions of sinners. And in those days the prayer of the righteous shall reach unto the Lord. And for you the days of your judgment shall come. And the, all the words of your unrighteousness shall be read out before the great Holy One. And your faces shall be covered with shame. And he will reject every work which is grounded on unrighteousness. Woe to you, you sinners who live in the mid of ocean and the, on the dry land whose remembrance is evil against you. Woe to you who acquire silver and gold in unrighteousness and say, We have become rich with riches and have possessions and have acquired everything we have desired. Now let us do what we purpose. Let us keep living a life of sin. Later will come and we'll repent later. Let us just keep indulging our flesh in our life and, and, and living it up. For we have gathered silver, and have many are the husbandmen in our houses, and our granaries are, are brim full as with water. Ye, and, ye, and like water your, your lies shall flow away, for your riches shall not abide, but speedily ascend from you. For you have acquired it all in unrighteousness, and you shall be given over to a great curse." Thank you, Heavenly Father. There's so many. Oh, my goodness. Chapter 99. Woe to you who work godlessness, lawlessness, iniquity, and glory in lying and exalt them. And exalt in the lies. You shall perish and no happy life shall be yours. Woe to them who pervert the words of uprightness. 1 Corinthians 9.16, it says, woe, unto, woe is me if I preach not the gospel and transgress the eternal law and transform themselves into what they were not, into sinners. They shall be trodden underfoot upon the earth, meaning in hell. In those days, make ready, ye righteous, to raise your prayers as a memorial, a place, and place them as a testimony before the angels that they may place the sin of the sinners for a memorial before the Most High. In those, in those days the nations shall be stirred up, and the families of the nations shall arise on the day of destruction. And in those days the destitute shall go forth and carry off their children, and they shall abandon them, so that their children shall perish through them. Yes, they shall abandon their children They are that are still... <coughs> We are more than abandoning them. We are we are murdering, kill and killing babies, um, uh, unborn babies, and and now with the new laws that that have been passed, people can kill them even when they're born. Um. So again, I swear to you, you sinners, that sin is prepared for a day of unceasing bloodshed. And they who worship stones and grave images of gold and silver 
and wood and stone and clay and those who worship impure spirits and demons and all kinds of idols not according to knowledge not according to the word of god shall get no matter no manner of help for them and those who are worshiping artificial intelligence and 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 transhumanism and all these ungodly new world order order and 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 um b system stuff and they shall become godless by reason of the folly of their hearts you can reference romans 1 on uh, on that and their eyes shall be blinded through the fear of their hearts and through visions in their dreams through these they shall become godless and fearful for they shall have wrought all their work in a lie and shall have worshipped a stone therefore in an instant shall they perish but in those days blessed are blessed are all they who accept the words of wisdom and understand them and observe the paths of the most high and walk in the path of righteousness of his righteousness and become not godless with the godless for they shall be saved and so this is encouragement and hope to us for us to walk in the in the paths of his righteousness and to keep his commandments and become not godless with the godless for they shall be saved in matthew 24 it talks about that those who endure until the end shall be saved woe to you who spread evil to your neighbors for you shall be slain and sheol just as Bill was explaining and, and giving us testimony of how people are slain and dismembered and cut up and destroyed in Sheol. Woe to you who make deceitful and false measures and to them who cause bitterness on the earth, for they shall thereby be utterly consumed. Woe to you who build your houses through grievous toil of others and all their building materials are the bricks and stones of sin. I tell you, you shall have no peace, and there is no peace in hell. Woe to them who reject the measure and eternal heritage of their fathers, and whose souls follow after idols, for they shall have no rest. Woe to them who work on righteousness and help oppression, and slay their neighbors until the day of the great judgment. For he shall cast down your glory, and bring affliction on your hearts, and shall arise and shall arouse his fierce indignation and destroy you all with the sword and all the holy and righteous shall tremble shall remember your sins tremble we got to tremble before him thank you heavenly father folks i'm going to stop there i just wanted to share this and i i pray that it blesses you i pray that it wakes you up i pray that it wakes others up i pray you share this with others and that uh, we give all the glory to the lord the lord wanted me to share this and for many it's a, a, their final call and um lord i pray right now that you um bless those that are listening those that are going to listen later father god that you bring your people in that you bring them back to you father god he's always willing we we have a chance right now we're alive we're breathing we have a chance to repent we have a, a chance to surrender we have a chance to fall on our knees and repent before the lord and 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 give him the glory and give him our lives and follow him and deny ourselves and follow him Thank you, Heavenly Father. So, Lord, I pray that you bless these people. You touch them, Lord. And uh, again, I bless you guys. I love you. It's been a very hard and tough uh, dream to share, but a very much needed uh, uh, um, testimony in this hour, in this hour of so much godlessness in this world. So wherever you are in the world, I pray you share this. I pray that you... Um, use it to witness to others and to bring others uh, 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 that are not listening that are lukewarm those that are backslidden the, there's all kinds of people in hell folks those that are that are backslidden the ones save always saved lie from the pit of hell 
There are Christians in hell. There are so many people in hell of all kinds, folks. Thank you, Heavenly Father. So again, I don't want to make it any longer. I just I bless you and uh, I I pray that you're well and that um, the Lord touches you, that the Lord shakes you to the core. If you're not walking with the Lord, I pray the Lord shakes you to the core and convicts you. This is a message of out of His mercy to save your soul. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, peace be to you. Amen.